Hello everyone and welcome back. Got an interesting one for you today. When I first saw this, the first thought was, oh no, that tooth is cracked. That's not a good pattern of bone loss. You can see the caries on top though. So it made me think, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this tooth. Um, definitely caries going into the pulp there. And no signs of cracks. You can see definitely nasty leathery caries and breakdown of the filling. But um, as, you, as we go through this process, you'll see there is actually no vertical root fracture whatsoever inside here. And we were able to get everything dry. So I ended up doing this just in a single visit um, you know, definitely would feel more comfortable if I had something like lasers or gentle wave, but my number one thing is, can I get everything nice and dry? And in this case, we were totally fine. So as far as what we're doing here, uh, clean out, you can see just how nasty that carries is when it's soft and leathery like that. It tells you it's pretty active, uh, kind of angry decay. Um, it's always interesting to me that there's kind of a almost protective layer uh, underneath the caries that goes right on top of the pulp tissue as well. In this case, they're obviously you're not doing vital pulp therapy because tooth is dead. But interesting that the tooth does try to retain some level of uh, vitality and tries to protect itself. But in this case, there wasn't anything left. So you can see a lot of work with the garbage there just to get that nasty caries out. And then almost that calcification, the uh, reactive reparative dentin that you see down inside there, um, you need to clean that out to make sure you have access to all of the canals. In this case, it's the four canal tooth. Um, I'm very pleased with how the x-ray ended up looking on this one. I was able to get things nice and small. Um, little pulp stones there too. Got to use that spoon to pop that out, get all that nastiness out as well. And then once you're free of all your obstructions, you can go with it through with the normal process. So 8C, just like normal, make sure we're painting down to the apex on here. Always get your working length before. Same things that we've been saying, you know, as, as I've, <laughs> in every video, pretty much. <laughs> Open it up here with that VT Scout 2006. Um, you can see the like kind of nastiness draining. I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to finish it at this point. Anytime I see drainage at the beginning, it usually makes me a little concerned about it. And what you'll find is on cases that are really nasty, as you get down to the apex of the tooth, what you'll find is that there's actually more drainage coming out. It's almost like you open up and then all that pressure gets released as well. A um, lot more rinsing than normal here because of the infection. So I did speed this up slightly. If you notice, that's looking a little more phrenic. <laughs> um, going down here now with a 17, you can see those bubbles. So definitely some bacterial activity is present there. Um, you do see a little bit of a vertical line running through the tooth there. It's not actually really a crack per se because you can't really tell where it started. Uh, but that, that does not not anything to worry about as far as the tooth you know being unrestorable or anything like that. So you can see a lot of bubbling activity in here. Going back in with the Triton like normal, just get this thing rinsed out and as clean as possible. Um, and here we are. Go ahead and get our working length. Um, you guys have seen this before, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip it because everybody knows how we get working lengths. Once we get our length here, one thing I did do, um, I'd like to get my working length pretty dry, and I put a little bit of liquid back inside there before starting to run those rotary files. The tooth isn't necessarily you know calcified in it oh, you can't find anything way. It is, however, a long tooth. I think working length here is about 21 and a half, uh, 22, depending on um, which canal you're in. You can see me actually going down past there. Uh, it is a good uh, trick when you are, you know, getting used to your files. Usually the way they design it is that the area where the stopper is, that's going to be right at 21. And then you'll have those stripes for the colors on top of there. Oftentimes that's another millimeter. So you can be a little bit crafty and get down to 22 with a 21 millimeter file without having to get out the larger files, which is kind of nice if you're having, you know, some teeth that are, some canals are longer, some are shorter. I do this a lot with uh, upper molars oftentimes that palate will be about two three millimeters longer than the buccal canals and so you can actually get it all done just with the 21 millimeter file so getting down here you can see there's still some gunk coming up um, but when we go ahead and do our rinse in here like I said lots more rinsing than we would normally just because of how nasty the take case was um, it's starting to get pretty darn clean here so you can see me uh, using it right there going down to that stopper or going down to that color bar that's my 22 millimeter mark and it's good to measure it each uh each file system is going to be different, so sometimes it'll be longer, sometimes it's shorter. I think pro tapers are a little bit longer, for example, and sometimes those hubs that go into the actual handpiece are longer and shorter as well, uh, which sometimes makes it nicer if you need a little more length, and sometimes if it's uh, tough access to get in, you actually don't want that extra millimeter or two. So going in, using that activator, um, you can bend the tips. I don't know if I've used that, uh, said that tip in the, <laughs> said that piece of advice in the previous videos, but you can actually bend the tips to 
get them into that area. I'm um, go ahead and dry them out here. And this is the moment of truth going in with my micro suction and seeing if we can get this canal nice and dry and really no drainage coming up from this tooth whatsoever. I've also found that when you go in with that air only strop co and just gently dry it, that also is a good test. Uh, sometimes, especially in the sinus, that little gentle pressure of air will actually start to cause drainage. And that's a sign that the tooth needs calcium hydroxide. So as you can see, going with our paper points, we're getting it nice and dry. Um, not, I always test those paper points by kind of gently pushing against the rubber dam, as you can see. And if it buckles, it tells me it's still wet, but these are just pretty much as straight as they were when I put them inside. So uh, really quite pleased with how this case ended up turning out. And we're gonna go ahead and do the squirt technique for that. You can see nice and dry, no signs of drainage or anything, four canals on this one. I'm gonna do the squirt technique for this. You can do it for skinny canals. Um, that's actually my preferred case for using it. I think it's most predictable here. Larger cases, it's a little bit harder. So just as you see me do 100 times before, we recapitulate with that 20k file, which is really important here to make sure that we have a guide path all the way to the apex. And so going in, um, you with a skinnier canal too, you need to spend a little bit more time with that condenser going down. So I actually will hold it a little bit longer than I would for a larger. Once again, this is why I don't like teaching. <laughs> um, how to do squirt technique because it, it, it's a very nuanced feel and you kind of need to have the uh, experience and a lot of reps under your belt before you can start to feel comfortable with it. But in general, if it's a longer or skinnier canal, you need to use a little bit more apical pressure or a smaller size plugger. And if it's larger, if the canal is larger or if the tooth is shorter, you don't necessarily want to push quite as hard because you can actually get some extrusion of gutta pressure out the apex, which is never a good day. Um, so you can see, Nice class two, almost a little bit of gunk coming out of there, which is kind of fun. Um, you make sure we get things nice and clean, and it still there's some little bit remnants inside. They're always interesting to me. Uh, this is a, this would have been a great case for gentle wafer laser for sure. Um, we'll we'll get one eventually, I promise. <laughs> so going back down. Um, filling everything up as you can see it's pretty straightforward here now on a skinny canal case like this I do like to use the pack mac just right away um, sometimes on larger canal cases I'm concerned about the extrusion like I said that pack mac it is a straight up just chainsaw and so if you have a larger shape or larger apical size you got to be careful with it in a case like this where really the size is 17 um, you you kind of need the pack mac to get in there and kind of clean everything out so removing the sealer with isopropyl alcohol like normal and like i said going straight in with that 20 size 25 uh, pack mac just to make sure any voids especially in a case like this we have to push a little bit harder on these longer skinnier cases you're usually going to get a void at the apical portion of wherever your plugger is because the size of the plugger at the tip is a 35 and the size of my back filling the the needle it's a 25 gauge so much larger than a 35 and so there's naturally going to be a little bit of void in between the two and so this is a good thing to always check with your um with whatever system you're using, it doesn't have to be BNL, it can be, you know, wh whoever you're using, you want to make sure that you know what size your tips are, because if they don't line up, you can get voids a little bit more readily. And I knew this was going to happen in here, hence why I went straight in with the Pac Mac. So sorry for the little diversion on the Pac Mac, but I feel like that's a underused tool, especially in skinny canals, and highly recommend everybody learn how to use that if you're going to be trying to do these more small shapes. Um, so we're going to do the restorative on this one. Um, like I said, nice guy, want to get his tooth back to you know, he was mostly concerned that he had a big hole in the tooth. <laughs> um, one other interesting thing, look at how little bacteria was actually present in there. I mean, obviously we cleaned out all the soft stuff, but I find that this disclosing is letting me know I have no idea how bacteria actually work. I don't think none of us actually do. Maybe Gary, Gary Carr. Gary, Gary's pretty good at knowing this stuff. <laughs> but you can see that case was completely just soft and leathery and nasty. You'd think it'd be just littered with bacteria that we'd have to blast away. And there's barely any uh, on this. So um, kind of interesting which cases, like I said, I've, I've been using this now for a year and I'm always astounded which cases have a lot of bacterial activity and which cases have almost none. So interesting there. Um, it could be that maybe because I was doing more rinsing than I would normally in a case, you know, for that would be vital that there was more cleaning out of the bacteria. 
I don't know. Um, kind of an interesting one. I'll kind of keep an eye on it and see if I can figure out anything here. But same bonding technique. Um, I did actually get uh, two new bonding agents. So I have a one-step universal and the new two-bottle system, uh, both from Clearfill. So once these run out, I'm going to kind of do a side-by-side. -side. One room will get the one bottle, one room will get the two bottle, and I'll report back to everybody on what's uh, going on. But we do have to use this. Unfortunately, this stuff's expensive. <laughs> so we're going to finish using this up, and then I'll kind of report back. Uh, I just did a case recently with a great prosthodontist in town and he's he's recommending universal at this case so um, my main goal was just to not have to carry silane and keep you know all that extra i wanted to have mdp plus the silane hence why i'm switching uh, but i've been using this stuff for so long it's gonna i want to make sure that whatever we have coming in is going to be as good as the what i've been using so fill it up with build it just like we would normally this case is going to get a crown on top of it um, but i'm really not too concerned about this tooth i think it's going to be just fine i'll definitely keep a close eye on it um, want to make sure that we uh, cap capture any healing um, i assume that we're gonna get some pretty good healing this is a younger patient that's one other thing to kind of consider here when you see really large uh, findings on the pa is that they're bone softer when people are you know in their teens and i think this patient was in his early 20s they're gonna have just naturally uh, softer bone and so the bacteria and the inflammation is going to move a little bit faster and you'll see larger apical findings but they also heal a lot faster you'll notice this when you work on kids if you work on the elderly in comparison their bones going to be more dense and it's going to usually lead to more really painful infections because they then the the apical finding isn't going to actually push through the bone tissue to the gums and actually start draining. So uh, go ahead and smooth everything off just like normal, same burrs that we would use for everything. Um, I did uh, extend out to make sure you remove all of the existing um, composite as well. I did cut that out. There was a, not sure if you eagle-eyed viewers, viewers noticed, but there was a little bit of composite that I didn't get when we did the first disclosure, or disclosing? Disclosure? It sounds like lawyer speak. <laughs> uh, there's one that I didn't clean out at the first time, and so I went back, re- disclosed, re-sandblasted, and got everything looking good. But that's our final as far as the clinical photo, and then it really, really pleased those beautiful small skinny shapes. I know uh, a lot of people use this sign, you know, you gotta go to size 35, whatever it may be. I have thousands of cases showing that you definitely do not have to get to a size 35 to have healing. So um, really pleased with how this one turned out. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please drop it below. Um, like and subscribe, and seriously, just message me if you have interesting cases or something you want to be seen. Um, I'm, I'm doing this for you guys. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next video.